Good evening, and welcome to Slash Tracks Action News, episode number nine. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. It's good to have you here, Josh, with me as always. Uh, still without me, so yeah. Yeah, what, um, what, what soda are you drinking for this uh, evening's episode? Just regular Pepsi. You don't even have a bottle or anything. What's going on? You're in the poorhouse now. <laughs> You're just drinking well, out of a... This is all the producers would supply me. Just a little plastic Dixie cup. The producers? Yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't remember sending you anything. Um, in fact, Pepsi Canada announced the release of Crystal Pepsi starting June 13th, and the American release may be canceled. I There's saw, rumors around it's canceled. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. I saw you talking about that on Twitter the other day. Um, so, what's the deal? Did, did it get canceled because there wasn't enough interest, or just because it got leaked? I don't know. I, I talked to this YouTuber that covers sodas and stuff. It's like a whole channel where they talk about sodas. Him and his son, uh, and he told me, "Don't worry, it's coming in July." Um, Canada got it early. In 2018 or 2017, they got it a month before America. Um, so the the June 13th thing was for Canada. And honestly, it wouldn't make that much sense to cancel it, considering this is the 30th anniversary year. Yeah. But I told the guy, I was like, oh, well, okay, if it gets canceled, I'm sure I can find a Slashaholic from Canada, you know, or, <laughs> or just hit eBay. <laughs> So you're that guy now. You're going to pull your strings of the Slashaholic Nation. You're like, hey, uh, all, all the content you know we produce for you guys here on the channel, like maybe you could send me you know, some, some uh, clear, so clear Pepsi's, maybe. You're going to no, be that I'll guy. Pay I'll pay him. I'll pay him. I'll put it out there right now. You send me, uh, if I give you the money to send me 50 Crystal Pepsi 20 ounces, I will give you $100 for doing it. Or 100 loonies, whatever the Canadian money's called. Looney Wait a minute. Users. Wait a minute. Hold on. We don't even know what the conversion rate is on that. And also, you want 50 of them? So that's two, $2 a bottle, let's just say, which is not what it costs because you're not putting the deposit into factor. Also, to ship 50 of those bottles, the weight of it would cost yep. an ass load. So you're going to actually be costing the person who's going to send it to you. No, I'll like, send them the money to do it. More money to send it than it is. Like that's not a good deal. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay for shipping and everything up front. This just in: breaking news. Josh is Josh trying is to rocked. rob the Slashaholics for his crystal clear Pepsi addiction. More at eleven. No, 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 no. Because I'm gonna I'm gonna give them the money for shipping and everything yeah. up front. You know, so it's more likely that I end up getting robbed. But. Okay. Uh, it, right. I'll pay for the shipping, pay for the product, get me the price. Okay. And once it arrives, I will give you the money. All right. Uh, the, the extra money for doing it. So there's the offer right there. I can vouch for Josh that if he says he's going to do something, he'll do it. But the math, the initial math uh, situation troubled me on that one, Josh. And uh, let's move past that. And let's get... <laughs> you, you look genuinely upset. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm just, You're like, I'm just fuck this out. guy. <laughs> I'm just bummed out that, you know, there's a chance it might be getting canceled or whatever. Uh, but I can always eBay it. If it's going to be a wide release in Canada, I'm uh, sure there's going to be a ton of them on eBay. So, right. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Breaking news. This just in. I apologize for calling you out <laughs> on, the, on the episode tonight, Josh. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's All okay. Right. All right, I'm moving not, on. I'm not canceling the show. What do we got? Let's get into uh, mean comment and nice comment of the week. And we had a couple of really nice ones. I know, uh, so I'm we excited did. to see. We had some really nice comments this week because um, Slashaholics, we are coming off of the biggest episode that we've ever had for the podcast. Uh, Josh, what is it? Twenty eight thousand views for episode number eight so far, or twenty seven thousand? It's like right in between. It's it's around twenty seven five. So. Okay, so twenty seven thousand five hundred views for episode number eight. Which, by the way, uh, you guys, thank you so much for watching, telling other people to watch it, for clicking subscribe and like. It helps everything. You know the YouTube algorithm. You hear everybody talk about it all the time, but it's a real thing. It uh, is. Yeah. So we really appreciate everything. 
And uh, with that being said, I want to get into... Do you want to do mean comment, or do you want to do uh, nice comment? We did the mean one first last time, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get into uh, the nice comment. Nice comment of the week. One of the best episodes yet. Congrats on the sponsor. Keep it rolling, and watch out for those nuclear grizzly bears. <laughs> and that's from Prex Era. Probably a Canadian or American name right there, Prex Era. Uh, yeah, I had a few friends that I grew up with named Prex Era. <laughs> Era. Could Prex Era come out and play, please? <laughs> No, you guys suck. Is it P-R-E-X-E-R-A? P-R-E-X-E-R-A. It sounds, Prexera sounds like a new medication. Like, ask your doctor today about Prexera. Side effects of Prexera may include anal leakage, unplanned pregnancy, anxiety, and dry mouth. You know, just kidding. (laughs) Thank you for your nice comment. Is the anxiety, uh, do you get the anxiety from the unplanned pregnancy or the dry yes. mouth? Yes. Both, both. They go hand in hand. Yes. Anal leakage. They used to have um, warnings for anal leakage on, like, certain uh, snacks and, like, 3D Mountain Doritos. Dew. Yeah, 3D Doritos. Yeah, it was three, the 3D ones from the 90s. Okay. Uh, and, not the new 3D ones. It was, like, something in them started with an S. Uh, what, some ingredient they put in the 3D. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, I thought I had diarrhea. It just turns out that I've just been eating too many 3D Doritos, I guess. What, how the, why would that particular <laughs> chip, of all things, cause anal leakage? It was something to do with how they made it. They needed that ingredient um, to, <laughs> to give it its puffiness. I don't know. The one guy who's, like, really sensitive to eating 3D Doritos is like... <sighs> Like if I I really really enjoy these chips, but I really don't like my asshole leaking all the time. It's like <laughs> I have to make this bag. yeah have to make this terrible decision every time I want a bag of 3D Doritos. That's not he'd have to just clog his butthole up with some toilet paper or wear a tampon or a diaper or something every time he'd eat them. It would seriously come down to that. You know what? If Crystal Pepsi caused it, I don't think I could give it up. Same with Ecto Cooler. I already Side know. Note. I already knew what you were going to say about that particular uh, product before you even said it when we were talking about that anal leakage situation. I already know that. A funny story. Uh, This past summer, I ordered some Ecto Cooler from 2017. Oh, yeah. You drank it. I already drank it. Right? Uh, Not the can. The can was disgusting. I tried to pretend like it wasn't that bad. But I got a hold of some juice boxes. They expired in January 2017. And to this day, I can drink them, and they taste just like Acto Cooler. The only side effect is, the next morning, I'm regretting it. That's all I'm going to say. But okay. they, they, don't, they, don't make me, they don't make me throw up or anything. They taste perfect. <laughs> but They don't yeah. make you throw up from your mouth, but your <laughs> asshole is definitely throwing up. You know, so if, if I ever am clogged or something, I'll just have an Acto Cooler. You know, you, 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 have that. We don't even need insurance or health insurance. It's like if you are like if you need to go number two, have an ecto cooler from 2017, or go to Taco Bell. Right. Uh, either one. Get the taco salad. It yeah. doesn't taste the same. Yeah, just get whatever you have to get. I remember taco salads when I was a kid. Uh, my mom was bigger and I was bigger, and uh, whenever she was like in the mood to go on a diet or something, she'd be like, "Get in the car." We're eating healthy tonight, and like we, she'd take us down to Taco Bell, and we each get a taco salad. Like that's eating healthy. Yeah, to my mom it was like fried shell, all the crap in it. It's like we really wanted to be good. We'd get the sour cream on the side. <laughs> that's my mom. That was my mom's idea of like health food. That's still a fun memory, though. I'm glad yeah. you got that. Uh, uh, I hate to ask, but what's the mean comments? Of the okay, week? well. <laughs> Was it on our podcast, or was it on a slash track? These were both on podcast episode number eight. Okay. Um, Mean comment of the week. That's five minutes I'll never get back. Uh, (laughs) And his name is Minecraft Delisi. Um, So he likes Minecraft, so I guess... five minutes old? We took five minutes. Dude, we took five minutes of his Minecraft time away from him. Uh, So we're sorry, Minecraft Delisi. Uh... Thanks for giving us a click. Thanks for giving us a view. We appreciate it. Uh, you can fuck right off with that comment. <laughs> um, that's uh, 45 seconds we're never going to get back talking about you. 
Yeah, hopefully we never see you in the comment thread again. Just continue, but mine, Minecraft Elisi, we don't want to see your comments anymore. Uh, you're banned from the comment section, but if you want to continue to click our videos and help the algorithm, more power to you, pal. There you go. Let's get into some fun facts. We carry, we just covered some heavy topics. Uh, anal leakage, uh, assholes throwing up. Those are fun uh, facts. Yeah, those are no, those weren't fun facts. Those were those happened to be fun facts, but they weren't fun facts for the night. Josh, here's first fun fact of episode number nine. Okay. Hopefully, I'm not speaking French on this one because we're going to <laughs> Germany. In Germany, escaping prison is not punishable by law. The desire to escape is considered human nature, and inmates will not be punished if they successfully escape prison. Will they, if they get caught, do they have to go back and finish their term? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, they just don't have uh, probably sentences, like extra stuff tacked on. They're probably not. They're probably just like, get over here, you little scamp. Like, you know, great, wunderbar, great work, you know. <laughs> good job, good job. You, you made it out, That's great good. work, you know. But you're going back, you know, because you're a dirtbag and you're a felon. So you got to go back. It's like, well, good job, Alex. You escaped, man. That is awesome. You still killed a whole family and yeah. like six children. So you're yeah. going back to jail. Yeah, but, we got uh, a we got a good news, bad news sandwich here for you. You're still an absolute murdering, raping <laughs> dirtbag, but you know you did escape. So you know, bravo. You, you get know. extra chocolate with your supper tonight. Yeah, German. no, you can actually have chocolate tonight. You know, instead of your 3D Doritos and 2017 Ecto Cooler, that's making your asshole throw up in your like. You, that'd be easy to to escape if that's what they're feeding them every night. The one night that they're not absolutely just crapping their brains out, uh, they could use that as a chance to focus on an escape plan, you yeah. know, because instead of being on their toilet, you know. He they crawled through a river of shit, and that was <laughs> just in his cell. <laughs> they crawled through a river of ecto-cooler and 3D Doritos and made it clean on the other side. All right, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, Dark Knight Rises. You've yeah. Seen that. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. The prison he's put in, right? Mm-hmm. That's like in a different country, right? <laughs> like that's where he trained. Um, he escapes that thing and somehow, with no money, no resources left, gets to Gotham City, you know, like immediately, and uh, gets after the final part of the movie. Is that Are because you- he escaped the prison? Was that Germany? And they're like, "Oh, you did such a good job, Batman. We're gonna fly you to Gotham." Uh, the League of Shadows is located in Germany, apparently. No. Uh- <laughs> They are you talking about Dark Knight Rises or are you talking about where he's in the hole? Yeah, that's uh, Dark, that's Dark Knight Rises. That's yeah, the I'm one talking. where he's trying to get out of the hole and Bane yeah. is like, "You were merely you were merely adapted to the darkness. I was born in it." Like yeah, like yeah. he he gets uh, Bane breaks his back, which I yeah. love because I'm a comic book nerd. DC, uh, they it, it didn't happen the same way as it happened in the comics, but it was still a cool little throw in. Um, but yeah, he gets thrown in the back, back into the jail. Yeah, he escapes and without any resources, the company had been stolen from him. No money, no airplanes, anything. He gets back to Gotham like really quick. Um, I just never. I, I was just making a joke. Is it because it was Germany and they gave him a, gave him help because he escaped? You know, maybe. Well, if any, if anybody knows where that prison was in that movie, that's something I would like to know. I have no idea what Goggle is, Google, so I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You underestimated my nerdiness and how deep of a dive I'd want to take into you making a joke about that. Because I think he just Muppet map map traveled to back to Gotham. Yeah, we need to do that on Slash Track sometime. Yeah. uh, yeah, Travel like that. Um, Fun, A quick fun fact, and I'm not even going to, like, go into a deep dive. The judge in Dark Knight Rises was supposed to be the Joker by uh, Heath Ledger, not Scarecrow, like they ended up doing. Oh, it was supposed to be the Joker, really? It was supposed to be the Joker. That's what the plan was, to have Heath Ledger do the, the, the judge, the ones that's sending people out to the ice. Yeah. Um, that would have been. That part would have went to him. Can you imagine Heath, like the Joker, uh, like how hard it would be to get him to show up to court on time every day if he was the judge? Because he does whatever the hell he wants to do. He likes anarchy. It would have been uh, though. You know, it's like life or death. You know, like he puts either way, he's going to send him out on the ice. It just fit him more. Uh, the Scarecrow. It's cool to see the Scarecrow in all three movies. Cillian Murphy, um, the Scarecrow. I 
liked his character in the Dark Knight trilogy. I, I did enjoy him. But in the Batman the Animated Series, he's way more menacing. He's like borderline Freddy Krueger uh, level of terror. Gotham and, did a good job with him, too. Yeah, he's Scarecrow. In the Dark Knight trilogy, it's, it's like Scarecrow light. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not buying not it as buying much. Do um, you want to get into fun fact number two? Yeah, let's do it. All right. In 2013... A dad in China hired gamers to kill his son in the video game he was playing, uh, so the son would start looking for a job and get a real life. You know, I, what would suck is like if the guy was like sending out like the message to these people, and his keyboard quit working, but he didn't notice. You know, yeah, and he didn't get the part on there in the game he's playing. It just said, "I'm going to pay you a million dollars to kill my son." <laughs> Oh, I thought you said kill. I thought you said kill his son and end his life, not get him a life <laughs> by killing him in the game. Oh, my bad. Well, you know we're still going to need to be paid. So, yeah. He, I wonder if he hired. I wonder if the League of Shadows uh, were the ones who he contracted. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. And the, yeah. when they got caught, they got thrown in the pit, but they escaped. <laughs> and <laughs> they're the <laughs> okay, um, Josh. Wait. What? Breaking news? Yes, breaking news. Breaking news. Nuclear grizzlies uh, attacks are on the rise. Uh, on the rise? Yeah, uh, across the West Coast this week. So, so West Coast? If you're on the West Coast, be on the lookout for nuclear grizzlies. Like Oregon? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we got to end the show right now, then, <laughs> because I got to go to my bomb shelter, my nuclear grizzly bomb shelter, and bat down the freaking hatches. And all we have to eat uh, down there, because I didn't really plan ahead, is 3D Doritos and uh, Ecto Cooler. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucked. We're going to be uh, hiding from nuclear grizzly, grizzlies in the bomb shelter while I'm shitting my brains out. What a great day I have ahead of me. It's like, this just in, they've learned how to use machine guns, so now they're machine gun-toting nuclear grizzlies. <laughs> 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 or chainsaws. The, <laughs> the nuclear grizzlies have now attained the ability to use... Firearms, and also they can create torches, uh, and they can chainsaws. also throw daggers, yeah, and run chainsaws. Um, Josh, uh, did you... Fact number three, what do you got? Okay, yeah. did you know oxygen is required for combustion, and hydrogen is a flammable gas, but together they make water, which actually puts out fire? That's... That's crazy. That's yeah. a good point. That's... I don't even know what to say funny about that. That's pretty fucking awesome, actually. That's, think that's about it. straight up Bill Nye, the science guy, uh, slash tracks, uh, uh, Mr. Wizard uh, segment of the show tonight. <laughs> There's nothing... Ox- oxygen is a poisonous gas, you know? We just we just happen to be a life form that breathes it. What? So, yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, I saw a fun fact that's not written down in the show rundown, but um, coffee, the coffee plant that creates, uh, you know, caffeine, the reason it produces caffeine is because it's a way of keeping the other plants or whatever from killing the plant itself. So it's like a defense mechanism. It, like, kills other things that would try to kill it. So caffeine is just a part of their defense system. Okay. Kind of weird. Well, that, that, is that one of the fun facts or like a little mini fun fact? No, that's a mini fun fact. I saw that on the Discovery Channel because I'm a big nerd and I like to watch stuff like that. This just in, I'm a nerd. More at 11. Um, check this fun fact out. When a very obese person is cremated, Josh, special measures actually have to be taken to reduce the risk of a grease fire. Yep. I worked at a crematory. I actually knew this. What? So what are the what are the special things that, that have to be done? Um, super super obese. It, they have there's like certain chambers the body has to be sent to. Okay. Well, that, I mean that never, makes. We never had anybody that was super super obese. So. It makes sense that they would have to take measures because they're obviously going to have a higher body fat percentage, and fat and grease is used for you know bacon grease to cook Crisco all that stuff, and it makes sense. Um, and it would make, I don't, I've never been inside of a crematorium or anything, but I can only imagine, 
you know, I can picture it in my head. I've seen photos and stuff. Like it's gonna, people are gonna be so creeped out by me. But when I worked there, half the building was an apartment uh, for the person, and I, I lived there when I worked there. Yeah, and uh, it was creepy as shit, man. <laughs> that was that was a creepy job. I yeah. I worked with a guy um, at so I was so I used to work at this restaurant, and this other guy worked in the kitchen with me. And I was in the front, he was in the kitchen, whatever. He was a nice kid. He wasn't making enough money in the kitchen, so he got a part-time job where he was on call at night where if someone died, he'd have to go pick up the body. Yeah, I did that a lot. Yeah, so he was on call for that. And I just remember him telling me the craziest stories. It's like, oh, you know, we're showing up to this death scene, and they're, like, they're going to have to go and pick up this body like in the middle of the family. You know, being there, it just sounded awful. But it paid so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it paid really well, so... He eventually left the restaurant to do that, like, full-time. Uh, my, my cousin, uh, older cousin, owned the crematory, and that's how I got the job. I didn't have any experience. I was, like, 19 years old. Yeah. But stuff like that never bothered me. I don't really get sick or anything. Um, like, I, at one, one time, I drove four hours to pick up a body. Mm-hmm. I had to drive back four hours alone in the middle of the night by myself on, yeah. like, back roads with no street lights. You know, I got a little freaked out. <laughs> you're like, you're, you're I like, mean, you're like, it wasn't scary at all until the guy like started talking to me uh, from yeah. the body bag. This one guy applied it and uh, he, he stayed there for about two weeks. Uh, he went on a run with me and uh, I started talking I'm like, okay, Miss Flora, we might, there might be some bumps up here. You know, just trying to kind of freak the guy out and yeah. uh, see, if he, see if he can handle it. And the thing is our gurney we didn't have like straps to hold it in place. <clears throat> so if you, if you hit your brakes too hard, the gurney would roll up and pretty much be in between the two front seats of the van. And oh. that's what that happened one night. Somebody like slammed on the brakes in front of the van. I had to slam on the brakes. Yeah. Body comes up right between us. The guy quit the next morning. So was the body covered? Was it strapped down on, on whatever it was on? Right. Yeah, but it, it was clear clear body bags. Uh, you don't see black body bags very often. Uh, yeah, Josh, there's not any uh, black body bags left on the market because the WWF bought them all in the early <laughs> '90s when the Undertaker was stuffing Kamala and you know Isaac Yankum and all these other bastards in them, like every match. IRS, you know, all these guys. You know, some of them had to be claustrophobic. Some people might call bullshit on me working, but that was a real job I had. Like I'm. I've done some crazy shit. I've I've been a pro wrestler, uh, stock car racer, like on dirt track, like dirt track racing. I've been in a couple movies as an extra. Um, one of them I can show you the trailer for. Uh, yeah. It never got finished. <clears throat> I was uh, worked at a crematory. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I've narrated all these books. Um, You've been I've on been Divorce been, Court. Divorce Court, Judge Deneen Piro, and Paranormal... Uh, with, it's called, uh, oh my God, uh, evil evil encounters. Yeah. Or uh, it, that's that when, when I first did that paranormal show, it was a Canadian show called Evil Encounters, and then they changed the title and stuff and made it a, uh, released it in America. The show it's called Fear the Woods in America. Yeah, I've seen uh, when I first uh, started watching your stuff. That was one of the first things I watched, and it creeped the hell out of me because I was watching it at night. In the back room with, like, the lights dimmed. It was, yeah, scared the hell out of me. Uh, and I've had some fun. Here's another thing you've done. Uh, you now have a podcast and a movie riff show with a former Fox Sports Radio host, which is myself. So you've done almost everything, yeah. You've covered the whole gamut, dude. <laughs> Josh, oral sex is illegal in Indiana, okay? However... The law was deemed unconstitutional and cannot be enforced. So if you live in Indiana and you're having oral sex, it's illegal, okay? You know it's illegal. Josh knows it's illegal. I know it's illegal. Just because you can't be punished for it doesn't mean it's still not wrong, okay? So when you're going to go down on each other in Indiana, just think about what you're doing. You're flaunting in the face of, uh, you know, law and decency, okay? Just think about that. What do you think, Josh? I think that uh, when you get to jail and your cellmate asks you what you're in for, you know, they're going to be like, oh, so you're, all right, well, good news situation here. You get to keep doing that. <laughs> um, 
No, I was going to say, like, a cop shows up to your house. They know you're going down on your significant other. And the cop's like, listen, we both know that I know what you're doing in there. (laughs) I can't do anything about it, okay? But I just want you to know that I know, okay? Instead of starting off with Walt watching, you know, a a drug bust, you know, he just sees a, a porno. (laughs) <laughs> he goes to <laughs> Hank. Hank and everybody are b- breaking up uh, orgies and people going down on each other. <laughs> oh, man. That's his Breaking Bad. Yeah, he's like, man, how could I somehow make the best blowjobs and uh, 69s <laughs> available? Gustavo Freem's like trying to figure out how they can harness Hank's ability, or Hank's, Walt's ability to like create amazing fellatios. This joke sucks. This is not a good show. No, no, no. I got a punchline for you. Instead of instead of blue meth, it's blue balls. You know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this man who's been making these exquisite blue balls with ninety seven percent purity? This these are the purest blue balls that we've ever seen in the New Mexico area. Uh, check this out, man. In rare cases, Josh, it's possible for a woman to become pregnant while she's already pregnant. It's it's a hundred percent possible that I mean it's not a hundred percent you know that it's going to happen. It's probably not even like two to two to three percent chance it's going to happen, but it has happened. It would have to happen pretty quickly, I would think. I think I, what I <laughs> when I when I read into that fun fact, it's like the egg has already been fertilized by somebody, and they have sex again, and then or somebody else who knows I don't know, and then the the egg gets fertilized again. Like, it somehow happens again. So you could have twins... From different dads. From different dads, possibly. Or you could have twins... Would you call that slaternal twins? (laughs) Ho-ternal. Slut-ternal. Yeah, slaternal or ho-ternal. No, um... I have no idea, man. I I seriously want to do a deep dive on on that because it's really interesting. don't, Don't do it in what state was it? Arizona? Yeah, well, no... No, we wouldn't even be in that situation if you were in uh, Indiana because yeah. if you went, if you don't get pregnant from going down on somebody. Well, you said you wanted to do a, you said you wanted to do a deep dive on that, so I said don't 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 do a deep uh, okay, dive. Uh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, last fun fact of the show, Josh, are you aware that it costs two cents to make a penny? <laughs> costs two cents to make one cent. No, I did not. Yeah. Know that. Yeah. So, you know, why do pennies still exist other than for little kids to put in a jar and cash in later or for penny parties or for businesses to make something look cheaper when they say 99 cents? I'm I'm thinking in the future change, in the near future, change is going to get a rework. It's either going to be taken away and everything's going to have even prices Mm -hmm. or at least pennies and nickels might go away. I don't know. Pennies, Pennies are just one of those things. It's like... I tried saving pennies one time, just all my all my pennies for about three or four years. And I put every penny that I could find, every penny that I got from change, every penny, whatever, in that jar. And after four long years of dedication and determination, I cashed it in and I had eleven dollars. I said ten. I was close. <laughs> yeah. It was like eleven or twelve bucks. It wasn't anything, man. The only way you can get big penny numbers is if you have multiple family members putting it in. You have to have like five or six people putting all their pennies in at the same time. Then you'll then you'll get some serious numbers, but pennies are worthless. Um, first sports story of the night: Walmart heir Rob Walton uh, has actually agreed to buy the Denver Broncos with a winning bid of four point six five billion dollars. It is the most expensive team sale in NFL history. Wow! So, uh, you know, not paying. A decent minimum wage, uh, firing people once they make a certain living wage after a certain amount of years, no matter how loyal they are to your company, not having a union, all of those terrible, shady business de- uh, dealings that Walmart has done has finally culminated with the purchase of the Denver Broncos. It's nice to see good things happen to good people. What do you think? So Walmart's the owner now? Walmart owns the Denver Broncos. It's not official, but it's they put the bid in, it was accepted, and they just have a bunch of paperwork, and they have to make it official. How much was the total? $4.65 billion, 
with a B, dollars. Jesus Christ. That's a lot of money, dude. That's a lot of traffic stops. That is a lot of cheddar. And they and what did they buy exactly? Let's hear they this. bought the team. They bought the team, the Denver Broncos. They bought one team for four point six billion. Uh, four point six five billion because the price of NFL, NBA, MLB teams are ridiculous. Like That's crazy. pro sports, yeah, pro sports are so valuable. Had he have tried to buy the Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys would have been like six or seven billion, maybe more, because of their their, their popularity and their stadium. Their stadium is just immaculate and huge and beautiful. There's an episode of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt where one of the characters is trying to get the Washington Redskins uh, name changed. It is changed now. Yeah, yeah it's changed way. now, which which I think is appropriate. That that should have happened a long time ago. Um, but in this episode, she sees the people that want it changed, all these Native Americans uh, outside um, protesting, and they're burning like $250 jerseys, right? And that's how she convinces the people to change the name. You know, change it to something that pisses off a group of people, and you're going to make more money on your jersey sales. And stuff. Because they're going to buy it to burn it. Yeah, so, like, every every NFL team gets changed into something that, like, triggers people. Because yeah, they're just <laughs> printing money at that point, dude. I can't, I can't remember all the names, but it was, it was, you know, like the Indiana racist joke, you know, or something like that. It was just... Cleveland Indians, Washington Redskins. Well, no, like, it was it wasn't Redskins anymore. It was like something that triggers people. Like oh, uh, they change they changed the name on the they TV changed show. the name to every okay. team. yeah. Like one was like I think it would be like something like ra- the Washington racist jokes or something. You know, okay, like um, just shit that would trigger people. <laughs> um, expired the, the Florida expired coupons. You know, just shit that pisses people off. So go the ahead. Florida, the Florida rain checks. Uh, <laughs> the Baltimore, this is the last, the second and last sports story before we get into wrestling. Uh, the Baltimore Orioles have the same amount of wins as the Philadelphia Phillies after 50 games into this is into this MLB season. The Orioles have the lowest payroll in baseball, while the Phillies have the fourth highest and the Phillies actually spent two hundred and four million this off season. So Orioles spent no money, not a dime. Cheaply ran franchise. Uh, Phillies went for went for it all. Spent a ton of money. Huge payroll. Same amount of wins as the Orioles. What's your thoughts on that, Josh? That pro sports have way too much money. <laughs> it's freaking crazy. Owner and baseball in particular. Like I, I just it's hard for me to watch, but um, wow! Like, how much do you think a baseball team's worth? The Orioles. Uh, well, the Orioles aren't exactly that popular, but they're yeah, pretty popular. They're you know, pretty like, popular. Billions for sure. Billions, probably. I mean, team? yeah, the Blazers are an NBA team, and they're for sale. And Nike just offered like six point five billion. So it's like, uh, it's. I don't know, man. It's or maybe it wasn't six point five billion. Don't quote me. I feel like it was lower than the NFL, and the NFL was four point six five for the uh, for the Broncos. But what I, my point is, I think baseball is probably less than the NFL, obviously, because the NFL is like the king of United States sports. So I, I would say like a billion, maybe two billion for the Orioles, maybe. Okay, no, something that's like that. So ridiculous. And they make me want to eat an Oreo for some reason, like craving Oreo, like triple they, stuff Oreos right now. Dude, they make all their money from TV deals. Like a pro sports, they don't even like MLB has a really hard time drawing fans because it has a reputation for being slow, uh, not a lot of action. Which they've earned that reputation. People who like baseball love it, but the casual fan, it's just not, it's not for everybody. And they make all their money from TV deals. So they sign with these networks and they get tons and tons and tons of money. And in baseball, there's also a thing called revenue split or revenue sharing. So the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Dodgers, they bring in tons and tons and tons of money. But the smaller market teams like the Pirates, the Athletics, uh, the Orioles, they get a piece of that pie just by being a major league team. Yeah, it's for real. So the Oakland A's, it's a... It's a trickle-down theory. So the Oakland A's, which is my favorite team, they don't spend any money in free agency or in the offseason. They run it as cheaply as possible, but they still make a ton of money 
because they're sharing the revenue from the Yankees, Dodgers, and Red Sox. It's just over my head. It's just it's, it's it. There's a flaw. There's a flaw. They should be encouraged to try to win and spend money. It's ridiculous, man. They're all making bank upon billions upon billions. I just don't and, see how. I've seen baseball games on TV where like the 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 stadium is like half empty. Yeah, no, it's it's the TV. It's the people watching at home. They the TV rights are where it's at. It's just like wrestling, dude. Does Turner like, nobody... still have the Braves or whatever? Turner Broadcasting? Or... I don't. I maybe I don't remember. I don't know. TBS. It used to. I grew up watching the Braves all the time just because it was on TV all the time. And oh, WG, WGN had the Cubs. Those were the two stations. Harry Carey, man. Harry Carey. The high fly ball. Caught <laughs> by the end. Yeah. I loved Will Ferrell's version of him. You oh, know? yeah. He was great. Did you see just look drunk and like he had dementia? Like, it's like hey, <laughs> hey, Nora, you ever been to a restaurant and seen a marlin on the wall? His eyes <laughs> seem to follow your every move. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's, let's cleanse our palate. Let's get into Let's stop talking about billionaires. Let's get into some pro wrestling. What do I you was going to segue into wrestling. By saying, I bet Bischoff is pissed, you know, with the whole AEW getting, you know, TNT and TBS to to, to pick up their program uh, when I'm, that's what killed his deal back in 2001 was they didn't want wrestling on their stations. Yeah, and they just, uh, they like sold it for dollars of cents on the dollar because they didn't want to be like associated with it anymore. I'm the convinced. The Time Warner thing. I'm convinced. I've got a conspiracy for wrestling and then okay. I'm going to shut the hell up because I don't write the show. Um, Vince Russo, I believe, I will believe till my dying day, right. I agree with, uh, oh my God, why can't I think of his name right now? He's like one of my favorite Hills managers of all time. Got the tennis racket. Um, Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette, yeah. Uh, he believes it too, that Vince Russo was sent there to destroy WCW. But a lot of people are like, if that was the case, he would have, you know, him and Vince would be on good terms. He'd be working for him. I was like, okay, Vince Russo had a very big part hand in the whole attitude era. He helped turn WWE around. Vince would not let go of him right in the middle of, you know, what they were doing unless it was to kill WCW. I think Vince Russo got a payoff and an agreement from Vince McMahon to go kill his competition. And I think to this day, he's still getting paid you know, behind closed doors from Vince McMahon because, and that's why he's never worked there again. Um, I really believe that. I think it's that he was sent as an agent of destruction to WCW because he had some great ideas in WWE and everything he did in WCW seemed like it was sabotage. He and like, why, why let go of your golden goose? You know, unless it's the... I, I, okay. I don't agree with you. I don't believe that. I think that Vince Russo was surrounded with talent. Uh, Stone Cold, The Rock, mm -hmm. uh, Undertaker, Kane, the Hardy Boys, Edge, Christian, Kurt Angle, China. He's got all these things to work with, all these toys. And the difference between Vince Russo and WWF at the time and Vince Russo and WCW, Vince Russo, would his ideas would be filtered through Vince I, McMahon. I was about to say that. You're going to say it was that Vince yeah. McMahon was his filter. Here's Vince the McMahon thing. was his filter. <clears throat> the reason he didn't have that. The know. reason you know that and you say that is because every time it gets brought up, WWE employees or former WWE employees say that exact line verbatim, word for word. Because it's as the if, truth. <laughs> as if Vince McMahon told them to. He didn't. Vince isn't saying that though. Nobody says Vince doesn't say that. Vince is no. a company. No, Vince but is, everybody, Vince everybody is, else says. Vince was his filter. It's always like the exact same. The words are almost identical. But it's when they it's, say it. <clears throat> it's because it's the truth, though. No, nothing gets done in WWE without Vince saying so. He okay. he he'll have people write the show, right? He, they'll write Raw, and he's paying these guys to write the show. Like oh, the day had, he never had a Viagra on a pole match in WWF. The day of filming Raw, Vince will see the show that he paid these guys to write, and he'll just tear it up, and he'll just do whatever he wants to do. Okay. Uh, that he, he, Vince just does whatever he wants, man. But hey, if you're right, I would love that story to be right, and I would love to watch the documentary about it put out by <laughs> WWE Films. I'd love to see that. I, that would be great. Could WCW sue Vince Russo if that ever came out? 
Like, I think so. Uh, well, Vince, no, because they're owned by him. Vince so. owns WWE. They own all the tapes and everything. They own the nobody, trademarks and likenesses. And nobody Vince, can sue, but that would that would be it'd be crazy if like Vince Russo was on his deathbed. You know, and Vince, bro, 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 bro. I, he just stole my joke. Come here, bro. I'm dying, bro. Come, Come over closer, here, bro. bro. Come closer, bro. A little cro- closer, bro. Uh, I got something to tell you, bro. Um, okay, <laughs> so the first. This, well, actually, the second uh, wrestling story of the night. Um, one week ago was the 33-year anniversary of the film No Holds Barred being released in theaters. Did you see No Holds Barred, and uh, did you like it? What's that smell? What's that smell? <laughs> Dookie? Yeah. Hulk, uh, Hogan, yeah was no. on, Hogan was that... on to that guy having 3D Doritos earlier in the day, dude. <laughs> Battle of the Tough Guys. <laughs> Wasn't that what it was called? The battle? It was called Battle of the Tough Guys, and they were all jock asses. Yeah, they weren't even wrestlers, you know? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> there was a bunch of wrestlers that were in the Battle of the Tough Guys. Like, yeah. uh, the guy who, the the first guy, the guy who's like, eedy beedy wangers, or wangers, or whatever. That guy was a wrestler. I can't remember what his name was, but he was a pro wrestler. Uh, Terry Funk was in that movie, wasn't he? I, mean, I, I wouldn't so. be surprised if he choreographed some of those fights. He uh, choreographed all the over-the-top Stallone arm wrestling movie fights. He's in that movie, too, by the way. Did you know that Zeus wrestled later? You know you know about the tag matches and stuff with him? Yeah, and him and Macho King okay. and Brutus. Him in WCW, he wrestled there, as, and Hulk Hogan named him, since they couldn't use Zeus, they named him Z Gangsta. He, he wrestled for WCW a couple times as Z Gangsta. <laughs> I love the fact that we're referring to what Zeus did in the wrestling ring as wrestling, because what he did was not wrestling. You know, Roddy Piper absolutely loathed having actors get into wrestling. Yeah. Uh, he he was really stiff with Mr. T. Yeah, I know, I know uh, that. It was like a borderline shoot. And if you go back and watch that fight where Mr. T like won the boxing match, he did not win that fight. Roddy no. Piper kicked the shit out of him from pillar to post for that whole fight. Yeah, Roddy Piper, he might have been a little dude, but I, I think he would take Mr. T. In a real fight. Well, yeah, yes and no. Mr. T had won the, the um, what was it, like the bouncer of the year award, like the fight, the actual tough man competition. He won it like two or three years in a row. So Mr. T was a badass too. I think but... Roddy Piper's good at taking damage. Mr. T is good at dishing it out, but I think that Roddy would be able to take enough that he would end up winning the fight. Tire out Mr. T, Tire probably. Mr. In a fight. Yeah. I mean, I from what I saw, it, wasn't it WrestleMania Fire. 2? Where they, WrestleMania 2, they boxed, right? Yeah. yeah. I think Roddy Piper, it's clear that Roddy Piper was winning that fight. And I think if uh, he didn't have it in the back of his mind that Mr. T was going over, he probably could have killed him. And he, wanted, yeah. to, he wanted to yeah. go against Vince's... Uh, booking on that and if you look at mr t he looks pissed during that because he's getting drilled in the face over and over again <laughs> was wrestlemania 2 or 3 the first screw job where uh the black spider which was really the great moolah uh rolled up wendy richter or just like laid on her no what she did well, what it is is like when the small package and i've used this before not not that i have a small package it's a wrestling move okay mm-hmm. i have a very adequate package anyways um the small package, medium package, yeah. If you if you hook your legs like your own feet, like cross your feet when you put the small package on somebody, yeah. they cannot kick out of it no matter how hard they try. Yeah, she it's rolled real she, thing. she rolled up uh Wendy Richter. Wendy Richter and hooked her feet and Wendy was trying to kick out the whole time and couldn't. I did this to this one cocky kid that came from like this uh he, he didn't even he did training for like two months. And this guy that was doing shows in the one state over, like, booked him as, like, his head guy. And he came and did a show with us, and he's all cocky backstage. Like, I'm the champion over there, and I only did two months of training. Uh, duh, duh, duh. I put him against me that night. We locked up. I said, small package, and I hooked my feet, and I, and he couldn't kick out. You just pinned him immediately? like I pinned him immediately, and he could not kick out. <clears throat> he was so embarrassed and pissed and... Uh, but I think he needed to be brought down a peg, you know? Yeah, well, hey, and this just in, uh, Slashaholics, that kid that uh, VIP rolled up with the small package, that was The Miz. <laughs> no, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Hey, I did meet CM Punk and uh, AJ Styles in locker rooms. 
uh, back in my in my early indie days in Texas. I sure two did. Of, two of the all-time greatest wrestlers okay. in ring and on the mic ever. I mean, CM Punk's the whole package, but AJ Styles, as far as in ring stuff, good golly, Miss Molly, is he good? And to the person who asked if if CM really does, because I said Cookie Monster Punk in the last episode. There's a story that CM stands for that because that's what his grandma called him. Yeah. Uh, but there's other stories too. I just I really like that story and I want it to be true, you know, because it's just sweet. Uh, but uh, I've been in a battle royal with Doink the Clown, Barbarian, and um, Jerry Lawler's son, Grandmaster Sexe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> got R.I.P. Grandmaster. Yeah. Um. Here's a here's I want to get so we have this is a, uh, the third wrestling story and we're this is gonna, we're just going to say this really quickly. I'm glad you're uh, on. I got bit in the ass by Doink the Clown. And I still <laughs> haven't moved on. So go ahead. Uh, Melanie Pillman, uh, Brian Pillman's uh, you know widow, she passed away uh, recently, like I think this week or last week, and uh-huh. she's most famous for giving an interview to Vince uh, the night after Brian Pillman passed away. So. Uh, you know, our condolences, you know, uh, she passed away. I just wanted to mention that on the show. Um, and I remember that segment being really awkward and just, I couldn't believe it. it was like Vince used to do the weirdest crap for ratings back then. It's like, let's take the widow of someone who like worked for us, who just passed away and let's interview her for ratings. It's like, why was that necessary? Why did you have would, to do that? I would love to do a strictly wrestling podcast, like once a month with you to do some deep dives. Cause like, at one point, Pillman was working WCW and ECW at the same time, and both companies thought that he was like working for them. You know, yeah, he, and I he also Pillman he was really just trying to get to WWF. The whole yeah, time. I was gonna I was gonna say <laughs> Pillman Pillman convinced Bischoff to actually give him his release uh, to convince the other companies that he was being released because Bischoff thought he wasn't. It's all work, and yeah. Bischoff's like, we're you know, this is real release papers. Well, once Bischoff drew him up, uh, you know, Pillman signed him and then signed a contract with WWF. So he, Pillman worked Bischoff into a shoot, pretending that it was a shoot. So yep. it, like a real thing, he it, it, we're pretending and turned it into something real. That's Bischoff, crazy. Bischoff got played. And yeah, in Brian, his own game. Brian Pillman, to me, I've never seen anybody make Bobby Heenan as mad as Brian Pillman did. Yeah, what, he, when he grabbed him by the neck because Bobby Heenan was hurt. That yeah, was not hurt. cool. I, like, I didn't the like fuck that. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it was like on air. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, Bobby, That I I know that they show that. Like, oh, Pillman's such a badass. Look how he's a loose cannon. But that, that, that was, I don't. He, that he was not cool. Bobby. That yeah. hurt Bobby. Yeah, that wasn't cool. Yeah. Um. So we talked about CM Punk like two seconds ago. Uh. CM Punk just won the AEW championship at the latest pay-per-view. Well, he wrestled on uh, Dynamite on Wednesday and broke his foot. So CM Punk, the summer of Punk, is not going to happen. And AEW is actually not going to vacate the title. They're going to let CM Punk keep the title. They're going to have a battle royal, which is going to lead to another match, which will lead to another match for an interim AEW champion. So they're going to have... They're going to declare an interim AEW champion for this for this you know time be you know, time frame or whatever. So I guess when CM Punk comes back, they'll wrestle each other for the actual who's the real champion. So the summer of Punk just became the summer of huh? Yeah, the summer of what the fuck? Like what summer of what is this? Uh, like Chris Jericho is this? probably backstage going. <laughs> <laughs> or or um, they should. I listen, dude. They should have Daniel Bryan win the AEW championship. They should have Daniel Bryan turn heel. What? I can do a whole episode on Daniel Bryan. The biggest, what about drama, the biggest drama queen ever. Go ahead. Go ahead. What are you talking about? Anyway, I think that Daniel Bryan should get the belt, the interim belt, and they should meet up at a pay-per-view. That would be a good match. He's a great wrestler. All right. I'm not going to accept any Daniel Bryan slander on this, on okay. this segment. Every time he got what? How many farewell speeches did he do? Oh, it's not his WWE. fault. They were making him retire. He just That's loved the attention. He loved the attention. You know he did. He got off of on that. Of course he did. Of course he did. You would oh. too. I would too. Update. Uh, told I haven't done my hair update for this episode. <laughs> Your hair update. So, it's looking very, very full. Very yeah. full. Very long. 
Wow. Look at that. Look at the body you're getting. That's looking All big. Right. Now, if I could make a time machine since we're talking about wrestling. A hot tub time machine, yeah. If I can make a time a wrestling ring time machine or something. Like, a squared it, circle time machine. Ding, ding, ding. You have to hit the timer, the timekeeper's bell or something. Yeah. Instead of going back and saving a bunch of people, I would go back to like 1997, 98, pluck Chris Jericho out of WCW, take him to the future. So back when AEW was like new and okay. put him out the that. audience and say, look at that old guy in the ring up there, keeping the young guys down, uh, the champion there. Does he look familiar to you? Huh? Oh. Yeah, because back in, in the 90s, Chris Jericho constantly, all these old guys are just keeping the belt and keeping all the young guys down. And he gets Jericho. to AEW and he's like 50. <laughs> you know, Hogan and they weren't even 50 in WCW. And uh, yeah, like Hogan was like when Hogan came back and wrestled the rock at WrestleMania 18, he was 48. Yeah. That's what I'm so, saying. They weren't even that old. And when he was in W. So when Hogan was in WCW, he was probably like 45, 44, yeah. 46. And Chris yeah, no, you're like 52 or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this just in, I agree with Josh's take on this a hundred percent. Um, and, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we agreed on something wrestling wise. Uh, okay, last wrestling story of the show. So Cody Rhodes uh, just mm-hmm. recently tore his uh, hold on, uh, tore his pec, um, and he had a torn pec before he even wrestled at the Hell in a Cell against Seth Rollins, mm-hmm. and wrestled the entire match and went over. So Cody Rhodes won the match with a pedigree, I think. Um, and Seth Rollins was wearing the yellow polka dots, making fun of Dusty uh, at the pay-per-view. But Cody Rhodes went over, wrestled with a torn pec, and his – yeah, it's it looks really, really bad. His uh, pec almost looks like a paint by numbers. It's like really dark red, blues, purples, yellows. It's go, It's went all the way down to his hand. The, it's the whole – yeah, the bruises extended to his fingers, man. Do you remember uh, how Dusty Rhodes had a few, like, purple splotches like that on him? Yeah, he had, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like he, his son has got, like, half his body covered in the same shit now. It's, 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 I saw the picture. Vince should have never let him go out there. Just like Bischoff should have never let Jeff Hardy go out in TNA back in 2011 against Sting. When he was on pills? Yeah, like, he's just wandering around the ring. Like, Sting, as soon as, uh... Bischoff comes out and he's like whispering something to the referee. Then he goes over and like says some bullshit on the mic and then like puts the mic down and says to Sting, finish it quick, finish it quick, you know, and yeah. like, he's like, shake my hand. And uh, Sting just like gives him the scorpion death drop, pins him, and Jeff Hardy. But yeah, Vince McMahon has given people shit in the past for letting wrestlers go out there, you know, uh, drunk, high, injured, and. He sent Cody out there. I don't think Cody had any business being in the ring uh, wrestling like that. Hey, get him in the ring, all right? He promoted it. Get him in the ring. And it wasn't a head injury. You got to get him in the ring, Fit, right? Right. Huh? Yeah, that, that's Vince's motto, apparently. You know, get him in the ring. Card is subject to change, but not at Hell in a Cell. <laughs> End of story. All right? I am hey, glad to see Cody and... CM Punk, not not. I'm not happy to see him injured. I'm happy to see them still uh, on top. You know, I think that they've uh, they've got a lot of talent. And Cody Cody Rhodes is like a lot of AEW fans are pissed that he left AEW and they oh he took his ball and went home. But it's like we addressed that same topic in uh, previous episodes of the show. It's like no, he wasn't being used right in WWE. Went to AEW, created AEW with Tony Khan. Created a whole new character, got over, eventually went back to WWE, and now he's able to call all his own shots, and he's main eventing pay-per-views. So it's like, eh, he's kind of doing what he wanted to do the entire time, so good it's for him. Weird. It's weird to see, like, Randy Orton as one of the old guys now, because I remember back when he, like, had the cast yeah. on and the injury updates. The legend killer. Yeah, like, it's... And Bray Wyatt, I think, is one of the most interesting wrestlers from the past decade, and he's, I think he he's should very be... unique. Yeah, he's very he, unique. He, he would have fit in nicely in the 80s and, and 90s just as well as he does now. Uh, he's super talented on the mic. He's super talented creatively. He's super talented uh, in-ring psychology. 
Um, that one thing he used to do when he was like the leader of the Wyatt family, when he would like do a reverse like handstand almost, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Like where he did a bridge. Um, I was at the WrestleMania where he wrestled uh, the Undertaker and he did that like bridge while the Undertaker was like rising up and they were like looked at each other. That was a really, really cool moment. That was awesome. I can't believe um, to this day that Brock Lesnar broke the streak. That's a story from for another day, but all right. Yeah, that might be a deep dive wrestling. Uh, yeah. The streak getting snapped. That was. Um, you know what else has been snapped? You know what else has been snapped other than the streak at WrestleMania by Brock Lesnar? What's that? Another streak has been snapped, and we're going right into horror and spooky spooky news right now. Oh, right, let's okay. do it. All right. Speaking of streaks getting snapped, Nev Campbell. The star of Scream 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and Party of 5, ironically, uh, will not return for Scream 6. Uh, she had a financial disagreement with uh, the production company. Uh, I, I don't know if it's New, is it New Line Cinema still or whatever, but they're not, they're not going to pay her uh, what she wanted, and she's not going to appear in Scream 6. Yeah, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Josh? Do you have any more conspiracy theories that you'd like to throw towards the Slashaholics tonight? I think that either they'll come to an agreement in the next few weeks, you know, and we'll hear about it publicly because Scream is Nev Campbell, or this whole thing is to make everybody think one thing so they can, you know, it's like a red herring, and then she's going to pop She's gonna pop up in the movie either in a small part or be one of the killers at the end. That's what I think. I don't think she's, I think this is all fake, or if it's not fake, Mm-hmm. They'll come to some kind of agreement before the movie come, starts uh, production officially. So you know what? I, if she doesn't appear in Scream Six, I think um, they'll realize they screwed up. And if there is a Scream Seven, they'll like pay her to come back for Scream Seven and like pay her a lot of money because uh, Scream Six is not going to have uh, David Arquette and now no Nev Campbell. So you got Courtney Cox, Mrs. Cougar Town herself. She's going to try to carry the entire ball for the OGs. For they made a mistake. Six. They I don't know, man. Gail Weathers should have been killed, not Dewey. If they were going to kill a main person, they, they they messed up on that. Gail Weathers had a full character arc uh, from Scream 1 to Scream 4, um, so they could have absolutely killed her in 5. Yeah, Dewey, Dewey was always flawed. He was always a hero. He didn't need to grow because he already was a good guy from the first scene he was ever in. And let's be honest here. They didn't kill him because it was good for the story. They killed him for shock value. Plain and simple, his death did not push the story. It, it could have been pushed just as just the same with Gail Weathers being killed, or without either one of them being killed. They could, it, they could have just jacked shot. Dewey up bad. They could have like really hurt Dewey bad, but not killed him. It was just shock value, plain and simple, to say, "Oh, anything can happen." See, yeah, uh, that's why I'm not. I haven't even seen it yet. I don't want to see that scene. You know. Can you- do me a favor and watch it. Will you watch it tonight with Beth, please? I'm tired of you not being able to. You're not the 80s slasher librarian if you don't have a full ca- full library, okay? Will you watch it, please? I can't watch it tonight, but I will watch it this weekend. All right. Fair enough. And I even have the digital code. I bought the Blu-ray recently. I'll just I'll give you the digital code so you can watch it. How about that? I've got okay. Food. That sounds good. All right. It's free. Uh, all right. So let's get into uh, the, the second spooky story. All right. In the movie, American Psycho. Christian Bale based the main character on a David Letterman interview featuring Tom Cruise in 1999. Now, when Bale was asked about the inspiration behind Patrick Bateman, uh, Bale replied, Tom Cruise on David Letterman. He had this very tense uh, and awkward friendliness with nothing behind his eyes. What? Yeah, he had just this really intense and awkward friendliness with absolutely nothing behind his eyes. I would have. That's what he based Patrick Bateman on. Okay. Wow. I can I can kind of see that. I I have a photo. I'll, I'm actually going to probably put it on the thumbnail of this episode. Um, it's it is creepy. Tom Cruise. I, I'm telling you, man. Uh, the the whole Scientology thing, the whole like jumping up on <laughs> jumping up and down on Oprah's couch. Uh, Tom Cruise. There's there's more to Tom Cruise that, than meets the eye. Uh. He's got a lot of issues uh, personally. Like, I don't think he sees his daughter Siri that he had with Katie Holmes. Um, I don't think he's like, I think he's babied and pampered by the Church of Scientology. Like, they've almost made him like a deity. Mm-hmm. Um, 
in their church. So I think he kind of like walks around like God's gift. He had a lot of stuff break on the, like during the heart of the pandemic, there's audio of him screaming at people working on the set Yeah, where he comes across as just a complete dick. Um, After the Oprah thing, his career was basically dead and he had to come back in Tropic Thunder and play the comedic version of the guy who owned the film studio, right? Yeah. And was and knocked it out of the park. So Tom Cruise, like, there is something more than meets the eye uh, with that guy, I think. I don't it's know all those alien souls inside of yeah, him. Yeah, he's got a lot of thetans <laughs> attached to his body. His, his yeah. thetans are, are over the top. John Travolta's not even close to what Tom Cruise has in him. No, no. And David Miscavige, the guy who leads the Church of Scientology, realizes that Tom Cruise is the the butter on his bread, and that Travolta isn't exactly lighting up Hollywood screens anymore, so Tom Cruise is the guy for them, so I don't know if he's killing people and listening to Huey Lewis, but I don't know that he's not. How about that? <laughs> I can see it happening, you know. Yeah, and he, I don't know. He's killing him, he's saying, I'm not short. I swear I'm not short. Yeah, I I'm don't know. Man. I'm not a little man. Um, oh, dude, I've heard, I've heard stories about Tom Cruise, like, having them film like, demanding to be filmed, like, with the camera facing upward so he looks taller. Yeah. Cer- yeah. Certain angles and stuff. Stallone does that, too, though. Stallone Family does Guy that. does Tom Cruise perfect. He's like Stewie's height. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> um, little Tom Cruise. Uh, it's not really horror, but it's I don't know where else to fit it in. I've been reading uh, some reviews on Jurassic World 3 Dominion. I know you don't really care for it. I've also read them, and they're not good, but go ahead. <laughs> no, that's the thing. I don't listen to critics because Ghostbusters Afterlife came out, and all the critics were like saying that the reboot was better, and then the fans gave it a 95% fresh score. You Afterlife know, all, was good. Afterlife yeah, all, was good. Yeah, and, the, and critics nowadays are just too pretentious, and I've never listened to a critic in my life because I'm my own goddamn person. Yeah. And I don't need somebody else to tell me what I'm going to like and not like. I'm going to go see it and find out for myself. I'm going to watch Scream 5, you know. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to – I'm just pissed about the David Arquette thing. It has nothing to do with reviews. Have, you, like, seen, critics, critics, have you seen Morbius yet, though? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to watch that one with the family. Um, we'll be but, riffing that. We'll be riffing that right as soon after on Slash Tracks. <laughs> but Jurassic World 3 uh, is actually getting – a lot of praise from fans. They said it really brings it back to like the first movie and the old cast and the new cast are really good together. And I'm just, my point was I'm going to go see it. I want to see how it ends. I love Jeff Goldblum. He's one of my favorite actors of all time. Who doesn't uh, love Jeff they, Goldblum? He's great. Yeah. Uh, Sam Neill as well. It's great to see them back interacting. Anyways, my point is critics, people, please don't like it, it, If everybody listened to critics, Ghostbusters Afterlife would have had nobody there to see it, and it was amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't listen to critics. Critics are just there to get high on themselves, to to get their self on websites and stuff, and have people think they're just so smart and so awesome and all knowing. But everybody is different. You cannot listen to a critic, even if we tell you this movie blows. Don't watch it. Don't fucking listen to us. You might love it. You know. So find out for yourself. Don't. All the critics out there. There you go. Hey, so if we listen to critics all the time, there would be no Slash Tracks Action News Episode 9 because the first few episodes we did, the comments, we just got our asses torn apart. I mean, we had so many people saying so many terrible, mean things that, by the way, they would never say to my (laughs) actual face. They would never say it to our faces. Uh, Yeah, you would not. If you saw me in person, not that I'm some badass, but, yes, I will roll your ass up into a small package quickly. Uh, nobody nobody talks to people like that. But so what, anyway, my point is not that we're badasses or something because we're not. I'm just saying you wouldn't speak to somebody like that in real life. And yeah. we don't care. We don't care about the critics because if we did, we wouldn't be doing this right now. So That's what we, leave, we leave them in the comments. Yeah, yeah. If you have something to say, say it. Uh, and you know what? If it's a really, really mean comment, you might even be on the show because we start the show out with them. So. That's great. Um, let's end spooky and horror news with a couple uh, quick birthday shout-outs. Okay. Okay, Robert England, Freddy Krueger himself, uh, that bitch of a human being, <laughs> He just that Mr. Piggy himself, he just turned 75. 
So Welcome happy to birthday. Prime Age, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday, Robert England. He's having a career renaissance right now with Stranger Things season four, by the way. Oh yeah. So yeah, he's pretty good as Victor Crawley. Bitch. Yeah, he's I'm he's happy. pretty good. Seventy five. That's how old Ernie Hudson is. And Ernie Hudson, by the way, looks like he's like forty five. He looks amazing. Uh, if he dyed his hair, he'd look just like he did in the first two Ghostbusters. But he's got the salt and pepper. Yeah, Ernie Hudson's a handsome guy, low key. And Robert England, seventy five years young, still looks pretty good for his age. Let's get one more Nightmare on Elm Street out. I don't care if it's a prequel. I don't care if it's a sequel. I don't care what it is. I don't care if he goes to space. I want to see him as Freddy Krueger one more time and not on the Goldbergs. Okay, let's yeah, let's make that a happen. Stunt double. Use a stunt double for ninety percent. Yeah, he acts like when he's in interviews. He's always like, oh, I'm an old dog, you know, I can't do it anymore because all the stunts. It's like, listen, Robert, we're not doing Freddy vs. Jason Part 2. You're not jumping out of the lake on wires. <laughs> Just do all the normal Freddy stuff. When you're in a boiler room, scratch your claws. And if there's something super physical, we can CGI that shit or we can get a stunt double. End of story. That's <laughs> it. Okay? We also, this is a big birthday, okay? And I want to say... This person actually has helped the channel more than she knows, and I don't even think she knows it. Uh, Diana Darcy, the male girl prince, just had her birthday, and uh, we want to wish her a happy birthday. We hope it was great, and uh, we want to thank her for retweeting some of our episodes for Slash Tracks, and coincidentally, after she, Darcy had retweeted some of our stuff, that's when, the, that's when the channel started to blow up. So, Darcy, happy birthday. Happy thank birthday. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for everything you do for for the horror community and for the last drive-in and for all your cosplays and for being so interactive with your fans. You know, you're amazing. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. uh, before he moves on to the final section, horror fans, if you like video games too, be sure to check out VHS, the video game, and Evil Dead, the video game. I haven't played them yet, but I've seen some footage. They're asymmetrical survival, like uh, Dead by Daylight. But, like, really fucking awesome. Uh, check out some videos if you got a PS5 and all Xbox One or whatever. I hear they're worth it. I'm going to check them out, too. So, um, do some videos. They, they look really cool. All right. So, hey, talking about the video game news, uh, I want to piggyback on uh, physical media real quick. Okay. Um, so, this is the first headline of the show. Uh, a sealed first print VHS copy of The Karate Kid, Josh, just recently sold... For nineteen thousand eight hundred dollars. Wow, Will Smith must be really proud of his son. Got that one, you ding dong. Oh, the original, <laughs> the actual one. Nineteen thousand. Uh, Jesus, eight hundred dollars. So, like, somebody bought a copy of Karate Kid in the eighties and just put it in their closet or put it somewhere till now, because that's the only way that thing didn't get watched. Jesus Christ. It had the actual plastic wrap on it and everything. I, I mean, I'm telling you, man, and we've said this before in previous episodes. Yeah, we've said this to the Slashaholics on previous episodes. If you go to garage sales or you go to, like, antique places or if you go to thrift stores or estate sales and you guys see VHS tapes and they look like they're mint or if they're still wrapped, you need to buy that shit. So you can thank us later. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it's like music on records is better than CDs and shit. I love, we've talked about it before. I love VHS quality. I do. Yeah, I, me too. I like me better too. than 4K. 4K to me is like so clean and stuff. It almost looks like somebody went out with like a cheap video camera and just a home movie. Like yeah, it's it, so clear. It, you can see like uh, practical effects, especially in, like the early 2000s, mid 2000s horror movies. You could see the effect. Like, you could yeah, see where the makeup was and stuff. You could see this. It was too clear. Yeah, like it looked, I, it's like home videos. I yeah. Like I needed to look dirtier. I needed to look <laughs> grungier and filthy. I need. I want there to be bad lighting. I want my imagination to work a little bit better. A line um, around the middle of the movie. You want yeah. some at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I want some just filth and grime in my movies. Uh, so, in Northern California, Josh... A gas station is currently charging nearly ten dollars a gallon for gas. Jesus uh, Christ! Yeah, this is according to Gas Buddy. Um, this officially makes it the most expensive gas in the country. 
uh, at Schaffler's Auto Repair in Mendocino, California. Supreme unleaded gas is $9.91 a gallon, and regular is $9.60 a gallon. Okay, I got to tell you this. Back uh, when it was... uh... When the, when it was like three sixty was the average just not too long ago around between like three sixty four dollars and um, this was like early this year a certain guy who talks like this okay uh, saw one place in California that was selling gas for seven dollars one place in the whole country yeah everybody else everybody else was selling the proper you know like around four bucks a little bit three under. four bucks five bucks, whatever. <laughs> And uh, he went on. He was like on like ten different shows, interviewed. Gas is like seven dollars a gallon across the country. It's horrible. I've seen it, and I'm sure he's gonna have a field day with this one place charging nine dollars a gallon. So, dude, am I? So this one place that's charging, you know, almost ten dollars a gallon. It's gotta be a town that is far away from any other gas station. So it's like probably leaving a bigger city and going towards another larger city. It's probably like right in the middle. So like they can charge that much knowing that people are going to need to stop and get gas. So the $7 thing was, it was in a place that was really isolated. It's got to be something like that. Um, Like a town trimmers, you know? Exactly. Uh, (laughs) Here's $10 a gallon. You can pay it or you can be eaten by a graboid. Uh, You choose. You get to meet Kevin Bacon though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, you know we lost Fred Ward? I did see that, that we lost Fred Ward, yeah. Uh, Fred Ward had a really weird career. Um, he was in Tremors. He was in oh, Remo Williams. Remo Williams, he starred in that movie. He was the deadbeat dad in Joe Dirt. He was the dad in uh, Road Trip of uh, DJ Qualls. He's pretty funny in that. Um, definitely a character actor. I wouldn't say he had like a ton of success, but he was in a lot of stuff. So yeah, I, Fred Ward, he'll be missed. Is he Gilbert Godfrey? No. Uh, is he Louis Anderson to me? No, but it's still, you know, you don't want to lose anybody, but you know, Fred, Fred brought me some entertainment in my life. I'll, I'll give him that. We should do Tremors 2 at some point. D- d- what? Slash tracks? Slash tracks. Yeah. Tremors 2. Isn't that the one where they have the remote control cars and they're getting paid like ten thousand dollars? Red Ward and Bert. Gr- yeah, yeah. They're getting paid X amount of dollars per graboid they kill or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then they encounter <laughs> ass, ass blasters, right? No, that's part three. Okay, part three of Tremors has ass blasters, and actually the practical effects that the ass blasters that you see on screen, the the graboids were actually fed uh, 3D Doritos for those scenes. Yeah. That's why they're ass blasters, because they have anal leakage. So that's a callback for all the people in the comments that like our callbacks. There you go. Um, And if you like Tremors and you want some... Yeah. Tremors had a TV show, 13 episodes. If you don't believe me, go ogle that stuff. Go It really had a TV show with Um, Art Gummer. All right. uh Uh-oh. This just in. Story number three. Breaking slash tracks. Action news. GoFundMe has officially shut down the $1 million... Uh, GoFundMe for Amber Heard's fundraiser to pay back Johnny Depp after she lost the defamation case. GoFundMe wow. says no. We are not going to fund you, Amber. You're going to pay it back yourself. Wow. So she was having fans pay it for her? She was, somebody started a Kickstarter fund, GoFundMe to pay back Johnny Depp for uh, oh. the, the you know, damages. About that. There's no way. It was just somebody randomly. I can she, see that. She tried to, like, catch Johnny Depp in abuse, but while, while trying to catch Johnny Depp in abuse, she caught herself in abuse. So she caught herself in her own bear trap. She's, she's the slash tracks action news. Dum dumb of the week. Her career is over. I hope one day Disney will apologize and he can be Jack Sparrow again. Cause he loved that. He dressed up. I think I've sent you photos of this. Uh, yeah. He dresses up as Jack Sparrow and goes to can- cancer kids, cancer hospitals. And full on method, just like Mark Hamill does as Luke Skywalker. He does he did really it great really things times too. Yeah, he does really good things for children who who need something like that in their life. So yeah, we like Johnny Depp. Um, let's talk about let's talk about another story real quick. Uh, a Welsh man recently set the Guinness Book of World Records for for visiting fifty six pubs in twenty four hours. 
and he was required to have one beverage at each pub within the 24 hours, but it didn't have to be alcohol. So this just in a Welsh man dies of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> uh, this just in that same Welsh man also died from peeing himself to death. Can you imagine how many? That's yeah. not funny because I have a kidney stone. <laughs> oh, no. Seconds. I'm yeah, peeing no. right now. <laughs> I'm having penile leakage while we're filming this episode. I'm dead. Show's over. <laughs> um, let's get into, <laughs> hey. I think penile you, leakage. If, yeah, if you have that, you need to go get some penicillin, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> penile leakage. Um, so, okay, so here's here's another story. I have... <laughs> I have two more two more stories to end the show. Okay. Okay. Woman finds more than thirty six thousand dollars stashed in a free Craigslist couch. So this lady responded to a Craigslist ad for a free couch, brings it home, and notices that one of the cushions is like off kilter or not setting flush with the rest of the couch, and she unzips one of the cushions and finds a bunch of envelopes, and yeah. in these in these envelopes adds up to you know thirty six thousand dollars. So she calls the people that she got the free couch from. They're like, thank you so much for being honest. We actually were clearing out a dead relative's house. That's why you got the couch for free. And while we were clearing out the house, we found a bunch of envelopes, just like you described, with a bunch of other money stuffed in it. And uh, if you bring those envelopes over here, we will give you a reward. And she was given $2,200 in cash in addition to the free couch. For being an honest person. Okay, if she hadn't been an honest person, she would have got eighteen thousand. <laughs> she would have got thirty six thousand. Oh, thirty six thousand. Yeah, I yeah. was thinking half. Um, that's not really how it happened, Alex. She found out she got the money because on the way home she got pulled over for a missing tail light, and the cops oh, found the money. Oh no! Took it. Oh no! It's a callback. It's a callback. Yeah, the cops were like <laughs> the cops were the ones who set up the Craigslist ad, and they were gonna bust her ass whether she was honest or not. They just wanted to give her the opportunity to be honest. They wanted um, to practice their money taking uh, tactics. You know, it was a it was an on the job training thing. No, it's so really. Late. Would you have called? I would not have called the people. I'm sorry. I I, pr- I probably would have called. Um, I'm now. Sorry. Would I, hey, we, would I have called and said the exact number that I found? I'd be like, hey, I found $19,000 in this couch. Meanwhile, I kept, you know, 17000 That might have happened. No. Who's to say? If I, I don't know. Um, here's, the last, here's the last story of the night for headlines. Are you ready? Before you do, in the comments, let us know if you would have called the people or kept the money. Hey, it worked uh, out. That's... She. Dude, she got a free couch, and she got $2,200, so it worked out. I don't know, dude, if I could have lived with myself uh, knowing I did that. Yeah, I don't know, man, because obviously... I just assume that they were, like, druggies or something and did something bad, so... Uh, you know what I thought of when I heard when I read this story when I was doing research for the show? I thought of Breaking Bad when Jesse was just, like, he felt guilty and he was just throwing money on that playground and throwing bags of money on the street, and people were, like, finding it. It's it reeked of that, like. This more just breaking in, news, huh? Alex has a soul, and Joshua is a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more at eleven. Um, no, he was just throwing it out the window. Yeah, is that what you would do with it if you had it? If you didn't call, you'd feel guilty and throw it out the window. <laughs> no, if I really felt that bad and I didn't call them, I'd donate it to some worthy cause. I wouldn't. I, no. I would donate a big chunk of it anyways when I kept it. To a worthy cause. No lie. One year at Christmas, I like to, because I always donate, I'll buy a bunch of toys for, uh, toys for tots. And one year I had some extra money and I got to thinking about a place that might not have that many toys brought there for kids. Uh, the, uh, uh, beaten women's shelter, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the women's shelter for abused women. Yeah. I, uh, went to Toys R Us and bought a bunch of, bunch of toys and took them to the local uh, women's shelter. That's, and, uh, that's amazing that you did that. Um, I know why you're telling the story though, because you just admitted you're a sociopath and now you're trying to equal it out. <laughs> trying to make yourself look better. This is a work slash a holler. He, 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 I really did that. And if, if you, if you have a shelter in your area like that, a lot of people don't think about that around the holidays. 
kids, but there are a lot of kids there with their moms. Yeah, you know? dude, absolutely. So and they need Christmas as much as anybody. And sometimes, um, sometimes the smallest thing on Christmas, I grew up extremely poor. If you got like two or three things, made made all the difference in the world. So yeah, you think it's not a big deal to buy somebody a ten or fifteen dollar present, but it is a big deal because not everybody has thirty six thousand dollars in their couch. Okay, and a lot um, of these kids need it, but uh, you know they need, yeah. they need the distraction. Yeah. And, um, uh, well, let's do one last distraction for the slashaholics. Let's end the show on a high note. And this <laughs> this to me. This this is a very funny story, and this may be my favorite story of the evening, and that's why we're ending it on on this story. So, music teacher plays trombone to scare Bear away from school. <laughs> yeah, that's the story. It's not a nuclear grizzly, but a chainsaw. bear. Yeah, it's not a chainsaw nuclear grizzly bear, but it is a bear. And this teacher, who was the music teacher, his name was Tristan Clausen. So he's the middle school teacher in British Columbia at this elementary school. And uh, I don't know if it was Degrassi or not, but uh, sees a bear outside. And people were trying to scare the bear away before he showed up on the scene uh, to save the day. But he decided, I'm going to take my trombone out and I'm going to scare this bear away. <laughs> and I just, I can't imagine, like, did the bear run because he was so bad at the trombone? Or did the bear run... Like, does this work with other animals that show up? Are, do all animals not like trombones being played? <laughs> Would it work? Would the trombones scare humans away? Like, I have so many questions about this story. If a guy came at me playing a trombone vigorously and, like, <laughs> with, like, a menacing look on his face, I'd be like, yeah. okay, I'm gone. I'm gone. You can have the $36,000. <laughs> oh, my God. New. Day rocks. New day rocks. <laughs> P. Nile. <laughs> Link. Edge. The trombone playing nuclear grizzly bear that had penile leakage showed up with $36,000 in his couch. What do you do? In the show, Josh. In the show. Okay. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed episode nine. Um, good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Be excellent to each other. Say goodnight, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog. Yeah.